hijab. Isn't that oppression? No, it's not oppression. It's covering. The women covering their heads or covering their bodies is not an oppression. Their husbands didn't tell them to do that. Their fathers didn't tell them to do that. Their sons didn't tell them to do that. The imam didn't say to do that. God said for the Muslim ladies, draw your clothing across your bosoms and do not allow your natural ornaments to be shown except to those within your family circle. What are the natural ornaments of women, in case you don't know what they are? Their breasts, their shapes that happen to be different than that of men, their hair, those adornments should be covered. Now, just in case Christian people don't remember, just 40 years ago, just 40 years ago, Christian women never went to church without covering their heads. It wasn't it. Isn't that true? Ask your grandmothers. And just 50 or 60 years ago, 20 years before that, a Christian woman would never come outside with a short skirt, even. Even the nuns themselves today have succumbed to modernity. Because the nuns who committed themselves to the church and a religious life, how did they dress? They're not Muslims. They covered themselves. They covered themselves with an outer garment. And nothing on them was seen except the face and the hands. So if that was accepted by Christianity, it was accepted by religion. That wasn't something just that Muslim women were told, but Jewish women, Christian women, and Muslim women were ordered to do that in their scriptures. Now the fact that the modern civilizations ch chose to tell women they don't have to wear that, and they can wear bikinis, doesn't mean that God is wrong and they are right. Now for the Muslim lady, the wearing of the hijab is a protection for her. It's a distinction for her. Yes, it is a uniform so that she will be known to be a Muslim. She would not be molested. She would not be insulted. And no need for a man to stare at her and look at her because there is nothing appearing of her that would cause any unnatural attraction. Therefore, it is more than likely she can come and go with decency and dignity and that her natural ornaments will not create an inordinate liability for her like so happens when you see women wearing jeans and clothing that seem as if they painted it on themselves. Now all you have to do is look at these two women and you can see the problems that exist. Now of course, it doesn't mean that every woman that doesn't cover herself completely it doesn't mean that she's immoral. It doesn't mean that. It's not like the female. The male is not like the female. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Brothers and sisters, dear guests, the male is not like the female. Science tells us, reason tells us, experience tells us, and Allah reminds us. Men and women are different. So it is the society that oppresses women is a society that takes women away from their nature. A society that tells women that being a mother, that being a, uh, the housekeeper, that the one who is doing perhaps one of the most essential jobs in society is a degrading position. They talk about it. She's chained to the kitchen sink like she's some slave, like it's some menial task. And rather the woman who is honored is what? The actress, the model, the super businesswoman. And the more clothes she takes off, the more honored she is. This is the woman they honor in this society. The career woman, the politician, the woman who's a doctor, the woman who's this and who's that. Look at her, how successful she is, how independent she is. And anyone who stays at home, looking after the children, oh, look at that poor little thing. Look at her. Oh. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. 
This is a society that oppresses women. And you know what? You see it everywhere. You see miserable women. Women who've reached 35 years old. And they're desperate to have kids. Suddenly it hits them. Suddenly their nature overtakes them. And now what do we find? In order to overcome this, science comes in. They've introduced this intro, intro viral, I can't remember what it's, uh, intro viral fertilization. And women are being fertilized when they don't even, they're not even capable of producing eggs anymore. But they get fertilized and they're having children at 40, at 50. Because they missed out. Because of the pressure society put on them. This is oppressing women. This is taking women away from her nature. This is her making her feel inadequate. If she is a mother, and if she is a wife, and she is a homekeeper, she is made to feel inferior. That is oppression. It is a society that treats women as a commodity. As a commodity. That is a society that oppresses and denigrates women. It is an evil and unjust and tyrannical society. Do not be confused, my brothers and sisters, in Islam. Do not be confused. Do not be taken in by their propaganda. Do not be influenced by their lies. And believe me, they have sown the seeds of their own destruction. They have sown the seeds of their own destruction. And you see it. Because who is looking after the kids? Who gives the kids the love and the care and the attention that they need? Who is there to teach the kids the morality? Right from wrong. Manners. You know who it is? MTV. PlayStation. Because mummy is out working along with daddy. Huh? And who else is looking after the children? Who is looking after them? Can anyone look after a child like the mother? No. And so you find children coming with no morals, no concept of right and wrong, violence, sex, drugs, music, fantasy is the norm for them. That is the norm for them. And love, they haven't found love in the home. So what do they do? They join gangs. That's what they do. They join gangs. They look for it somewhere. If they can't find it in the home, they'll try to find somewhere to belong. It's happening in America. It happens in England. I'm sure it happens here in Australia. Kids on the street. Doing all sorts of things. Why? Because there was no one who nurtured them. They are sowing the seeds of their own destruction. They have already done it. And now they are reaping the evil rewards of their evil philosophy and their injustice and their tyranny. And they blame us. And they point the finger at us. They point the finger at Islam. They are the guilty ones. They are the oppressors. They are the tyrants. They are one, the ones who have degraded women and taken them from their nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for. In which they should feel pride. The person asked about a segregation. Why do Muslim women, why are they segregated? They're not segregated. They're not segregated. They're separated. That's the difference between segregation and separation. For instance, outside here you have toilets that say male, female, don't you? Don't you? Why? Why shouldn't there just be a toilet? Because there are sensitivities that we as moral, decent, dignified, educated people accept that there are sensitivities and privacy that the female would like to have as opposed to just walking into an open toilet. Now maybe in Amsterdam or some other places in Europe where they just have open toilets, it's different. But in most cases in the world, in most places in the world, they select to have a male and a female toilet. Why? Because there's the inherent inclination of human beings to provide sensitivity for women and sensitivity for men. Now in Islam, for us it's not a matter of being inherent. It is something which is God-given inspiration to do what? To separate the sexes. That means the genders. 
doesn't mean absolute separation, like we can't see each other, we can't talk to each other, but generally, my wife just doesn't, I don't go to another man's house and I just sit down with his wife and dance with his wife and he sit down and dance with my wife and uh, this is just this is a matter of friendship. Bob, just drop over anytime you like. Okay? We don't do that. No, I come to visit Bob or Abdullah. Abdullah's wife comes to visit my wife. I don't socialize with his wife. He doesn't socialize with my wife. Although there may be occasions where we eat together, our families socialize together, so we are obeying Almighty God. That's what we're doing. And sometimes we just have to believe what God orders us to do and benefit from the medicine. Sometimes when we don't follow what God tells us to do, then we see later on the reasons why.